Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. So in today's episode, ladies, we have Jasmine Starr. She is a business strategist, entrepreneur, and social media expert uh, from California. She has so many great nuggets to share on today's episode. What I think you're going to appreciate most, number one is her. She's so straightforward. I loved her approach of just like jumping in, sharing sharing very authentically and real with us. What I think you're going to get most though from, from the episode is really her ability to kind of help us get out of the weeds and get us thinking more holistically and really asking the hard questions and answering those hard questions. She really puts out some great, great questions for you to answer about your own social media strategies. She jokes about it that she's half holy and half hood. <laughs> so Jasmine talks about the social media channels that are available uh, to us. And we get you know confused about it. So she shares that you should focus on your avatar, not what's popular. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show, where we're all about our passion is to empower women to live a financially free and balanced life and, and balance with however you define balance. <laughs> always, always important to share uh, with you because we're all about women just living life on their own terms. Right, Andressa? It's so, so near and dear to our hearts. Yeah, it, it doesn't have, we don't have, unfortunately, right, this, this recipe that applies to everybody. And that's the beauty of living life on your own terms. You can make the call. Yes. And you're, you're in the driver's seat. And so much of being in the driver's seat has to do with social media. It's one of those things we love and some of us hate and everything in between. So Jasmine Starr, thank you so much for being on our show today. I'm excited to dive into all things social media. Uh, I just appreciate your time. Appreciate you being here with our, our, uh, community. I couldn't be happier. I'm excited to dive right in. Awesome. Awesome. Well, as, as those who follow us along in our journey of our podcast, which have over 250 episodes in uh, since we started a number of years ago, we'd like to get connected to you. Something quick coming up for us and uh, something that you can bring into your world and your life. So something that we've talked a lot about, Andres, I'm I'm going to share the tip today, right? <laughs> um, something that you and I have talked a lot about is the power of not always seeing our blind spots, right? And I, I don't really have any blind spots, but I know I'm joking. So total <laughs> joke, bad joke right there. I was going to say pause. pause. Editor comes back. Editor cut back. that out, right? No, I have, I have so many, but um, you know, it's hard to see our own blind spots. And I remember a time that recently I was part of a um, mastermind group. I was part of a retreat. It was a conference retreat. And, and a portion of it was a circle of women. It was like six of us talking about, you know, some of our goals, what was coming up for us. And I shared something about, um, I just kind of dismissed myself. I said something that I didn't even know I was dismissing myself. And a woman came up to me after, she didn't say it in the circle. She came up to me after during a break. And she's like, you know, Liz, do you know how powerful you are? I'm like, where did you get that information from? Like, I just, she kind of like, just came up to me and said, just like that. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm, I know I'm powerful. She's like, I don't really think you do. And then she just kind of shared some things, some feedback and really kind of called me on the way I was being dismissive to myself, the words I used. I said, I didn't say that. She goes, you did Liz. You said it just like that. I'm like, wow. I didn't even realize I said that. So and, and, and something, so since then, right, it was a few months ago, I've been really mindful of that. And, and I'm like, God, that was so, that was worth the trip. That was worth the trip, the money, the expense, the, all the work I had to do to get that even in place where I can, you know, hand my kids off and hopefully they're going to school with their teeth brushed and hair combed and all that stuff. But I, I thought about that, Andres, and I think about what's coming up for us, which is InvestorCon, June 23rd and 24th. And we are putting together this conference not for ourselves, we're putting it, putting it together to transform women's lives. So women literally walk out of that conference as a different woman, as a, as a more fulfilled woman, as a woman that they know they already are. They're not becoming something different as a result of going to this conference. They're, they're actually just reconnecting with it, just like I did. And I, you know, I, I just want to say that to, to invite you, to, to welcome you, to make sure this is on your radar and, and you're joining us June 23rd, 24th. We're just Every day we are working so hard to put on literally the event of the year for women investors, investing, 
self-care and business. We have five keynotes. We have 20 speakers. We have some amazing companies sponsoring the event. It's just going to be um, life transforming. And I want to make mention of that in connection to something that I got a few months ago. And had I not attended that, I might be still saying the same phrase that quite honestly was holding me back. So I want to make mention that and invite the women listening to come on board with us and join us in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. And I want to just say that, you know, combined, we have 27 years of experience in real estate portfolio, just close on 670 units. So it doesn't really matter. We have our blind spot are not defined, but the years of experience, our portfolio, how many zeros we have in the bank, they're, they're very different. And I think that what Liz is saying, we're curating the group of women, ladies that are coming to speak i want to be there to watch right i'll be hosting but i this is a type of 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 conference that i will personally attend because we curate it it's it's a is a it's a global it's a holistic approach in in their rock stars they're not going to hold back and one thing that i guarantee is that you're going to move the needle you're going to expand your mindset. You're going to make connections that are going to go beyond the event. And that is transformation and priceless. So I invite you to, to come. You're not going to regret. I guarantee you. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, and you can check that out that on our website and pretty much all social media, all, the, all where we're posting, which is a great segue. Uh, Jasmine, thanks so much for being on our, on our show here today. And, you know, we always like to kind of kick things off. Um, what, what you know moved you in the direction of even uh, getting into the space of, of you know branding and social media and all the work that you're involved in? Um, where did it begin for you? What propelled you? Um, how did that? How did that professional focus? Um, how was that born? Born for you? How did it start? Well, if you don't mind, can I can I respond with your to your question with a question? Liz? Sure, sure. That story that you just told about being in a mastermind and somebody it, it pouring into you and you saying yeah. that that was worth it and that your children, you hope that they got to school with their hair brushed and like their outfit, the matching shoes and, right. and sacrifice and the investment that it took for you to be there. My question to you, Liz, is did you share that very personal story out on social media? Mm. Oh, I like that, Jasmine. You so know, this, did I, so this is so it's so that's crazy. a really good question. This is why I it, it comes from me. It comes from me. So we we all have different skills and talents. And honestly, when people say, Oh, Jasmine's really into social media, and to an extent, yes, what I am about is getting the most amount of people interested and or invested in what I am doing. And the way that we do that is not by just sharing more information, it's about sharing information as distilled from our perspective, because you aren't the first woman to go to a mastermind, nor are you the first woman to go to a mastermind, hoping that their kids go off to school. And you're not the first person, the first woman to go to a mastermind, hoping that her kids are taken care of making an investment and then later talking about it. But the difference Liz is that you had an experience that was unique to you. My father is an immigrant from Mexico. My mom is from um, Puerto Rico. They met in East Los Angeles. And my father didn't learn how to read until his mid twenties. My father actually learned how to read right before he began teaching my sister, my twin sister and I, how to read. My father was so good at telling stories that he could captivate anybody that we were sitting next to on the bus or a neighbor, or if we were at, at friends, you know, with friends at church, he knew how to tell a story. And I think throughout childhood, I began captivated with stories. And so stories are, you know, our, our earliest ancestors told story as a way to create connection. Nothing has changed to this day, except for the fact that we are resistant to telling stories or getting personal for fear of what people will say. So whereas our ancestors, ancestors, ancestors sat around a campfire and told stories to create connection, our biggest concern is that we will tell a similar story, but instead of being illuminated by a campfire, we're being illuminated by a phone screen with tens of thousands and or millions and or billions of people who may or may not have an opinion about the story we're sharing. So instead of standing in the light of a fire or of our phone, what we do is we put a basket over the very thing that makes us different. And that 
is what makes me care about sure social media. But if next year you tell me that I need two matching dolphins and a clown suit in order for me to get my business moving forward, well then watch me start training at SeaWorld. I will do whatever it takes for people to number one, care about what I'm talking about. Number two, create attention or awareness about the thing that I'm talking about, because guess what? You aren't talking about anything special, Liz, and I'm not talking about anything special, but what makes it special is our vantage point, our education and what we're doing. So our objective would be to share, to get attention and then build so much trust that once you have a real relationship with a virtual stranger on the interweb, they will then bring out their credit card and invest in whatever it is you're selling. So I am not sitting here talking about the conference that you're planning. I'm talking about anything that you or any listener wants to do. You must follow that system again and again and again. And that is what makes me wake up in the morning. And I love to teach people whatever it is. And today it's social media because it's free. It's accessible. It's where people are paying the most attention, but next year and the year after watch me talk about the next thing. I started talking about blogging before blogging was a thing. I started talking about creating your own website and owning your domain, which is how I started getting off in branding. And then I started talking about this crazy thing called Twitter and then Facebook and then YouTube and then Instagram and then Snapchat and then TikTok. whatever's the next thing, ladies, I will do whatever I can to tell a story to build trust, to distill it, to educate, empower, or entertain in order to transact on my behalf. Well, ladies, uh, if that didn't capture your attention <laughs> to watch, to listen and watch this episode, I don't know what the hell <laughs> would. So if you had different plans, you buckle up because here we go. So Jasmine, a lot of the women that are listening to us are real estate investors, right? So as you're saying, like, okay, people already saw me doing demolition. People already saw that, that, what is new, right? But the biggest thing is not even that. What we hear is the fear of not being quote unquote perfect, or it doesn't fit the norm or whatever you, you go with a blank and that fear holds them them back from sharing. What would you say they can do to overcome that fear? Well, first and foremost, you know, so I always joke that half of me is holy and half of me is hood, which means there's a gangster. So I'm going <laughs> to oh, start like that. With, the, with the holy, holy part. And hood. Holy and hood, 50-50. So, you know, the holy part of me is that everybody struggles. Everybody struggles standing up. It's Theodore Roosevelt said it best. He, he wrote something called the man in the arena and Brene Brown has been known to quote that. And if, if, if Theodore Roosevelt needed to write it, one of the prolific most leaders of our time and Brene Brown, it, it starts her entire book with that passage. It means that the greatest icons of recent human history feel the same way. So we must normalize the conversation. What you're feeling isn't unique. There are just some people who choose despite their fear and despite the opposition decide I will continue to show up. So we must first start with saying you're not alone and you're not a special snowflake. The only difference is that some people decide to move in spite of fear. So if you're listening to this and say, I too make the decision to move in spite of fear. Now the hood part comes out of me. So do the work. That's just it. Because perfection, this idea of perfection, perfection is just procrastination in disguise. You will say, I'm waiting to, for it to get perfect. But what you're really afraid of is I'm afraid of somebody having an opinion because perfection is entirely subjective. Liz could spend 55 minutes writing her perfect Instagram caption and you and I could look at it and be like, eh, it's all right. And Liz was like, no, 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 this is perfect. And I might say, huh, for you, it's perfect. For me, it doesn't matter. And then you are waiting for your kids to pick them up from school. You're sitting in the carpool line and you haven't really posted, but you know, you need to talk about this conference. So you go out in like five minutes, you just whip something out. And then all of a sudden people start engaging and liking and commenting. And you're like, wait a minute, what happened? This wasn't perfect, but it was perfect for somebody else. So we sit here saying, we're trying to make something perfect when we know that perfection is subjective. What we all define as perfect is different. Instead of procrastination, why not get out with a little bit of gumption and put things out? The market will always tell you what it is they want to see. There is a reason why there is an entire network work on television, multiple, but we'll just name one HTTV. People are not tired of seeing demos and people are not tired of seeing makeovers and people are not tired of seeing reveals. 
People are not tired about hearing about like how to increase your property value by $8,000 by putting down sod instead of wood chips. People are not tired of talking about the, the benefits of laminate flooring versus real wood. It doesn't get old, which is why it has never gone away. So you could sit here and say it's been said and it's been done a million times before, but it has not been said or done a million times before the way you have done it. So if you have not done it a million times, then keep your mouth quiet, post the work and do it a million times before you have an opinion. Well said, which kind of speaks to this, this idea of social media routine. Just, just the sounding of that makes me like, Ooh, you know, like, you know, people, people need routines. They like them and other people, I, that's not going to be creative. I'm not going to be creative. It's a routine. So tell us a little bit about the power of the routine and how creativity can also uh, match up in that space of, of quote unquote, root, doing this as routine and consistent. Mm. My dad, um, great avid listener of beautiful music. And he, oh, he, he, he said a quote that I'm probably going to botch, but by Bob Dylan, it's one of his song lyrics is you have to serve somebody. And so my father, whenever I complained about brushing my teeth, I didn't want to brush my teeth. And he says, you must be a slave to the toothbrush or you will be a slave to the dentist. You pick, you pick, <laughs> you pick. Having a successful marriage can be difficult. You will either be a slave to communication and getting it right or a slave to loneliness after you've burnt the bridge between the person that you love the most. Yeah. So in cute. my opinion, when we talk about routine, I, I am a person, I started my very first career as a photographer. I broke the mold of wanting to have a nine to five because I firmly believed that I needed to exert my creativity out in the world. And then I slowly realized that much to my chagrin that I wasn't, my, my business wasn't with the camera. 20% of what I did was with the camera and 80% was everything else that I just didn't really know came with, with my business very similar to like home investors. Like everybody wants to do the reveal and the styling and the selling of it. But like, that is such a small, small portion of everything that goes on behind the scenes. So in order for me to create freedom in my life and live the life according to my terms, I actually had to create a routine. I had to create a system. The system gives the freedom. We will never get freedom without a system. We will never know where to skimp or splurge without knowing exactly where our time is going to begin with. And so oftentimes people say, oh, you know, creating or posting on social media, it takes so long. I then question, does it take long because a system hasn't been created? Just like in business, a good, a good general contractor has a system. You're not going to be putting cabinets before you've done the floors. That's a system. You want to look at your social media and not even social media. I don't even like to use that word. I'm going to be conscious about choosing the word marketing, brand mm -hmm. extension, brand awareness. You must have a plan for that or else everything you do makes you feel like you're on a hamster wheel without a clear vision in mind. So the routine, going back to it, the routine is, it is the foundation to everything we do in life, not just in marketing or businesses. You're speaking my love language, processes and systems. It's my love language. So I'm all about that because I agree. It, it really creates scalability and um, takes from your plate. It facilitates uh, all the team communication and free up, free up the time. In terms of strategy, right? For the women that are listening right now, when they see different channels, Mm. They, they get very confused where they should put their eggs. Is mm. it one basket? Is a one egg in each basket? Or is there a trend they're missing? It's, it, what we hear is that, okay, when I'm getting used to that channel or something else comes up. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell them? Well, first and foremost is to always understand your, your market. Because, you know, as people get into this, are they looking to attract other investors in their investments? That might be a different platform. If you want to be the go-to guru for young females in the space on how to get very started early on in early investments in small town USA, that's a different market. The way that you market to those two viewers are very different. If I was trying to create a consortium or like a cohort of high-end investors, because I want to do a series of them, um, let's say industrial investments in Southern California, I would probably be creating content on Facebook or LinkedIn. It's a larger demographic and people say, oh, those platforms, you know, they're for older people, they're dead, you don't use them. Well, you want to go where, where your dream customer is. 
or ideal client. So I never choose a platform on what's popular. I want to choose a platform for what's going to be profitable for me. You know, if I was really trying to get into the education game and let's say I had a digital course around flipping and I really wanted to target uh, females who were 27, I would triple down on TikTok. It, I would be making at minimum one TikTok a day two TikToks a day for that demo because you is, you can grow massively on the platform right now and there's so much scalability. But if you're just trying to be popular, that's fine. Then choose the most popular platform and start creating there. But if you want to be profitable, know who your target demo is, create content there and show up consistently. And the sooner that you get better and more consistent on that, then you can expand. But the problem is everyone wants to like, oh, I, I need to do seven things at once. But then you're posting like once every two weeks on each of those platforms. Then you're like, I'm not getting any traction. Well, of course not. That's like you saying, I'm going to lose weight and then going to the gym once every three weeks. Like you'll see some progress, but probably not much. It's about dedication, focus, and then expanding. You know, in terms of like analysis, like I, I think a lot about like posts that we do and, you know, it's obvious like likes or, or, or engagement, but is there anything else that we could be looking at? You know, when we start you know, women start getting more consistent, right? And they're and they're putting things up there, video, um, in writing, what have you. Besides likes and and what should they be in analyzing in terms of like like the market will tell you. I see the same thing. Like you know, the the the, the audience will tell you if they like something or not. But what exactly does it change from platform to platform, or in general, what are some like rules of thumb that women can kind of like analyze for themselves? Like what what's working, new- what's not, or even what you know. Because we assume, right, what works and what doesn't versus the actual facts. There's always nuances with different platforms, depending on the levels of engagement, like the engagement tools that a platform provides. At the time of this recording, the engagement tools that are provided by Instagram are so far ahead of any other option. But Mm. that doesn't mean that you should be creating there. It's just meaning that you have more ability to actually see what people are doing. However, let's not complicate it. Oftentimes, um, I don't know about you, but for me, I like to put things in my way to be like, look at how difficult it is. Look at all this work I'm doing. What if we were just agnostic? What if we were to keep it baseline as possible? How many likes, comments, shares, and saves? That's it. Let's not make it complicated. The market tells you with their fingers. The market tells you. So if, um, so for instance, let's just take Instagram. And if I create a reel, the real will do just fine, just fine on my account. If I put it out and nobody shares it to their stories, how I get over a hundred or 200,000 views is when I have a piece of content that other people begin to share. And so for me, a barometer that I could be, well, well, how many shares did I get? And I need to be keeping track of it. No, I don't. Because when somebody else is sharing and then one of their followers clicks on my account and watches that reel, maybe two, three days later, they're on their explore feed. There's a higher likelihood of them seeing one of your posts because their action has already expressed interest, whether they follow it or not, they went and they went to your profile. That alone is a sort of engagement, not measurable, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, how many impressions did I get? No, no, no. Let's just see. How are people interacting? Comments, likes. When somebody saves a post, it's the most, at the time of this recording, the most powerful thing that somebody could do within the algorithm, which is why I'm a big fan and ardent believer in creating three types of content. The content that you should, that you put out should fall into one of three categories or or sections, titles, however you want to look at it. And they all begin with E. You want to educate, empower, or entertain. These three are proven successful buckets for the type of content. If, if your content is not doing any one of these three E's, you're going to have a very hard time getting somebody to like it, comment, share it, or tag friends in it. It's about your follower. It's not about your business. It's about what your business does for your follower. It's not about you. I I love that because as we, we organically grew our vast heart community without any marketing. And then recently we start paying more attention to it as we, we scale our, our business and we, we hire different uh, folks. We hear a lot of uh, social media management or creators. There's so many different nominations um, for, for this quote unquote new profession. I don't know if it is new or not, but it seems that right now there's more desire because women see the need of it, but they don't want to do it. And, um, one of the biggest questions is how can we vet 
if the person that we are hiring, it, it is a good fit for, for, for us. Because mm. a lot of the women are say, I don't even know what to say or, or what structure to put in place. Mm. Do you have any tips when hiring a creator or social media management uh, company? Yes. But Andresa, I feel like I've coming in, like maybe I need to like take a spoonful of sugar. I feel like I've been a little bit hard nosed or a little like, uh, you know, like on edge and it's not that at all. I'm just wildly passionate. Sometimes I have a twin sister and she says, you're being mean to me. And I'm like, I'm rough with you because I love you. Like I want to push you into action. So if I'm coming off with it that way, like, please understand it's like, we live one short, amazing life. My mom was 50 years old and she had a relapse with brain cancer. She'd been battling brain cancer for eight and a half years. And I was 25 years old at the time. And it really caused me to have a shakeup in my life. And I thought to myself, I'm having a midlife crisis. We're not guaranteed to live to 80 or 90. We're not even guaranteed to live to 26 until all of a sudden I started realizing that we have the one thing that we can never duplicate. We can make more money and we can eat less calories. We can eat more calories. We have choice with one exception in life. And that's time. Not all the money in the world can never buy us an extra minute of time. So when you start asking me, what are this strategy or this strategy? I find myself getting so impassioned because I was like, if we want to save time, we must slow down before we speed up. I'm happy yes. to say people are going to, people are going to come back and be like, how is your mom? My mom is doing well. She's a walking miracle. Everything that I've learned about hard work, determination, dedication, and a positive mindset has come on the back of this woman. She's battled. Oh, so long, almost a decade. Oh my gosh, I got and the she chills. she came up on the other side mm. of it. So I wake up every single morning and it was the greatest gift. Her sacrifice was my greatest gift to look at every mm. single minute and say, what am I doing with this precious thing? Mm. It is so finite. So in order for you to find somebody who is capable to do what it is you want to do, it has 2% of that person's capability and 98% for the vision that you want them to deploy against. Deploying against a strategy doesn't take a genius, it takes a hard worker, but somebody only knows how to work hard against what it is that woman investor, that female investor wants. The problem that I see again and again is that not just female investors, not just investors, I am talking about the vast majority of business owners don't take time to actually say, what am I about? What do I want to create? What do I want this channel to do? And the minute you come back down and the minute you say, this is who I'm about, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to teach. All of a sudden, your efforts become scaled. But that's hard work. And people are like, I'm so busy with all of my other projects. I had a project go backwards. A pipe broke. I fell into escrow. I fell out of whatever it is. You will put something above that. If you mark it on your calendar and say, I need to create the vision that I want to do for my marketing. Then you bring somebody in and say, my vision is to go on Facebook. My vision is to go on Instagram and we'll expand from there. But until we figure out that this is working, I'm not going to expand. So I'm going to hone all of my focus. And then what it is that you do is you sit down. So this is why I'm the CEO of social curator. And what we do is we help business owners find a way to market their business. We follow a very specific strategic way of showing up and creating content in less than five minutes. But guess what? My system, the social curator system, it doesn't work until the business owner figures out what, who they are, what they want to talk about and what their vision is. They can't even hire somebody. So like, let's say for example, every month we give business owner caption templates. What are you going to write on LinkedIn? What are you going to write on Facebook? What are you going to write on Instagram? And then they're in within this caption driven for engagement. There are blanks to be filled in. All you have to do is fill in the blank. And what I've noticed is that it became very difficult for business owners who did not identify who they were serving or what they were about. They're like, I don't know how to fill it in. Hmm. So here we are taking it to the two, two yard line and they can't take it into the end zone because they don't know how to fill in the blanks. So what do we do to find the right person? You create a vision, you create the parameters, you create the goals. And then it's still not even enough to say, okay, here, my new social media manager, take this. Cause they're like, okay. Cause they're going to fill in the blanks using social creator, or they're going to write something on your own. And you're like, how did I, this doesn't even sound like me. Well, I would never say this. Of course not. They would never know. You have to give them pieces of content that you can point back to. 
Even if all it is that you do is you walk around with your phone and you just start talking in the morning and you're like, Hey, this is what I was thinking about. And all of a sudden they start finding cadences and nuances in the way that you speak and the way that you write. So whenever we bring on a new ambassador for social curator to be, to be deploying against our social media strategies, I ask them to, or their manager asks them to listen to my podcast to watch YouTube videos, to read blog posts so that they can start seeing those cadences. But we already have an identified, who are we serving? What do we do? What's our objective? What's our goals? We listen to this and then we give homework assignments and we work them out in four ways. Let's do it together. Number two, let me watch you. And if you have questions, I'm here for it. Number three, you're on your own. If you have questions, I'm still here. And then number four, you're off to the races. We don't want to do it so long that they become dependent on their manager or their superior, but we don't want to leave them isolated. So let's do it together. Let me watch you. You do it on your own and ping me in Slack when you need it. And then you're off. And after every single one of those steps, they're getting feedback on what to do to make it better. And then consistent check-ins along the way. That, that's great because I think that a lot of women, uh, unless they have all the step by step, they don't get started. Mm. And, and it's this procrastination. I, I love that you said that uh, perfection is uh, procrastination in disguise because that is a quote unquote an excuse that we we have been hearing a lot. Uh, would you also apply more or less the same strategy in terms of the investment, right? Because real estate investors, we're all about, okay, what is the return on my investment, <laughs> <laughs> right? So as you're saying, um, the, it, it really depends because you can get the numbers, but it's it's looking back at what you're saying, it's, it's, it's infinite right now because you don't know the, the mm-hmm. trigger, right? It could be so much more than just the, the first Face. So when women are looking to start investing in Facebook ads or any other uh, platform for, for, the, for to market, um, is there a strategy that you would also apply in terms of their budget? Well, it first and foremost, and again, I keep on going back to this, but it's, it's just the foundation for any efficacy in regards to marketing strategy, paid ads, organic things of that nature is by and large, just generally speaking, I know there's a bunch of different people and objectives, but like, what is the main objective of a female investor running an ad right now on Instagram or Facebook? What, what's their objective? What do they want to do with that ad? For example, we have we have one of our Strive members. She is very sweet. She just demolished the entire house and is building a, a new one. So there's different things, right? They want to, to grow their brand, but also it's uh, a proof of their track record. So when they're talking to sellers and making connections with realtors and other people, they know that she has a, a, a track record. So her objective, so, I mean, for all intents and purposes, her objective is just brand awareness. Correct. Do I hear that correctly? It could be, it could be. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I shouldn't say it is because I'm not her, but that's my, my impression. Okay. Well, that's the easiest type of ad to create because you don't need anybody to do anything. You just need somebody to see it. And since she's a locally, I'm assuming it would be in her best interest to run locally based ads and targeting against zip codes and targeting against locations in the neighborhood, because it makes no sense for her to run anything out of 50 miles from where she is, because she wants to create connections and solicit authority around certain places, people, and things. And in that case, when you could target into a particular zip code, I mean, you can end up hitting a buyer, somebody who sees like the transformation process and they're in like a school district that, that, that they want their kids to go to all of a sudden they begin to watch it. They get a new follower. If somebody, perhaps if she works with a contractor or she's like, wants to solicit validity as a builder, and there's somebody who wants to go through the building process, she might not do the entire investment like soup to nuts, but she could be high, you know, targeting her team or subcontracting or taking a portion off the top for the recommendation, things of that nature. If she's trying to um, build credibility with lenders and real estate agents, well, then she can create content that is specific. Like if I were her, I would be like, I'm talking to like, let's just say she's in Canton, Ohio. I would bring out my phone and I'm like, are you a realtor in Canton, Ohio? I want to share a project with you. 
And so all of a sudden you're pre-qualifying who should watch that who should watch that ad. And then you could create mm -hmm. ads targeting realtors in Canton, Ohio. And all of a sudden your ad is so targeted to who that person should be that like, you know, you don't need an ROI on just their visibility. Now there's they, somebody, you know, somebody had said originally in early days of marketing, somebody needed to see your business or your business name three times over. Now with social media, with so much messaging, people are saying it's now closer to like 10 to 20 times that somebody needs to see your name and your business before they're actually even aware or interested. So if all you're doing is running targeted ads targeted to a particular location, zip code or interest, my goodness, that's the best kind of ad to run. If you're just taking it right off the top. I think it's pretty dang incredible. Great. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and, you know, and then that progresses, that woman will progress to say, you know, I'll do this differently next time or that differently. So Correct. it's just, it's progress, right. And, and Correct. I love, you know, and especially the boots on the ground and people love seeing the projects. That's what's so amazing about real estate and the work that we do. Um, I wanted to ask you to a question around, you know, for you and your experiences, when was there a post, what post did you like create? And you were just, so, you know, surprised of maybe how amazing it did or how it didn't do well. Like, and what did you learn from that? I'm curious to even hear your own experience. Oh, girl, it happens on a weekly basis. <laughs> I mean, I am posting, I'm posting at minimum once, perhaps twice a day on Instagram. So it's just volume. The more yeah. you do, the more that you could predict something. And, but the, the beauty and the beast of social media, it's so hard to predict. There's some things that I put out and I'm like, Oh, I, okay. I think I got the pattern for the real. It should be under this many seconds and add this amount of text and you should do this, this, and this, and then nothing. And then I'll put a reel and traditionally a longer reel, like a, a reel that's like 50 or 55 seconds. It has lower views because it requires somebody to watch a 55 second reel versus a five second reel, that level of commitment. So I'm like, oh, posting a longer reels is probably not going to be driving up the views. And all of a sudden I put a long one out and it just hits and people are sharing and it expands. And so it, it's really hard to put like a, a clear measure on it, but I can say it happens all the time, but yeah. I am unattached to feeling like I'm every piece of content needs to be the best piece of content. My goal is to do one of two things. It is intended to attract a certain group of people and repel another group of people. It's, I am less interested in my post going viral as I am creating much smaller post towards a targeted market that will actually convert into a sale. And again, I am not using social media as an influencer. I am using social media as a business owner with influence. So my objectives change and I don't, I don't live for the likes. I live for the feedback. I live for the sale. That's very powerful because then, then you're then your way of being and creating the content shifts as well right. as a result, which is okay. probably critical, right? <clears throat> Versus the, <clears throat> the like abilities, which is what people, you know, get, get addicted to, right. You know, or they, or they get really down on themselves of like, oh my God, this didn't, this didn't go anywhere versus Let just moving on. Liz, have you ever seen somebody on social, perhaps somebody in your community or outside of your community where they just look and appear really okay in their own skin? and they could laugh at themselves. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it's the kind of like they're out like on a work site and then they had like, they bought a new jacket and the tags are still left on the count on the collar. And you're like, and they're like, have I been walking around with these tags? And you are endeared to the humanness of connectivity. Yeah. And then likewise, on the flip side, have you ever looked at somebody and we don't know the entire story, but human to human, we can sense that it feels like somebody is so in their head thinking about Every movement, every word, every action, every outfit, every, everything looks orchestrated and we can feel and sense mm -hmm. some, we don't know what it is, but this is just not right. It's not, it's not resonating. And so the beauty of us being okay outside of perfection is that we have real connections and community with people who we can ultimately get to work with. That's the dream. The dream would be for us to work with people we like, work with people who we find purpose in and work to something, create something together, being authentically us and then bringing other people on the journey. If we could show up like that on social media, we're powerful. And that's what I want people to really walk away from. It's not the car you drive or the purse you carry or your cute construction pink hat. It's, are you getting the job done? Do you love what you do? Do you share what you know? Are you humble? You're unstoppable. You're unstoppable. Yeah. 
And, 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 and I love that in the sense of it is that authenticity. I remember I did a, I did a couple of videos on Justin and I were talking about a project we were doing. And she's like, you know, the videos that are doing the best Liz are literally the ones that you're jumping out of the car. You know, it's very real. You're like, my kids are in the car. They're probably going to pull down their, their, you know, they're probably going <laughs> to do something with the window right now. It's like cold. And then my dad saw it. He's like, why is the kids in the car? I'm like, dad, don't watch that video. The heat was on the run car was running. I was right next to it. It wasn't like the kid was going to, but my point in saying that, right. Those are the videos that are very real, very authentic. And, um, but you know, what? like anything, right. The, the spontaneity does take planning. It does take strategy. And, and that's the part that, you know, creating that space and that time with, even for the, a lot of the women who are solopreneurs, right? They run their own businesses. They have their investment properties. You know, they don't have a social media team, right? Mm -hmm. But they want to bounce these things off of some, someone. And that's why the accountability groups, we, we stand for women having accountability groups and just like, hey, this is what I want to try. I know for me, that's helpful because it's just in my head, writing down social media ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to do it. I need to be with other people brainstorming. So um, do you find that to be a piece for, especially like the, the solopreneurs or the women that are kind of on their own, having some sort of like group community, like, I mean, I'm sure that's huge. So you can kind of just bounce it off of people to see what they think versus having to figure it out all yourself. Absolutely. Um, and I think that you, you would probably experience the same thing. Or one of the best early business advice I got as a founder that disseminates information, education to other business owners is that when we created social curator, we created it as a SaaS company. It's a tech, it's on its own tech stack. It's a tech mm. company. But what somebody said is that somebody will come for the product and they're going to stay for the community. And so we have a great product, but what we see is when I'm doing group coaching twice a month and then people are going in there, part of our methodology is we have, I mean, it's terrible. It's like the most ridiculous thing. It's called the QA method, Q-U-A-A. -A. Every time I do coaching, I follow this. Somebody comes in with a Q question, but what I know as a good coach is that there's always a question below the question. And so my job is to uncover what's the under question about this. That's the you. And then we go into the answer, what I think the answer might be, things to test. And then the last A, accountability. And there during group coaching, we say, we just heard X say that she's going to do this. If anybody else would like to join X in this, send her a, a DM, send her a message. We're going to make sure that this happens. We're going to commit to whatever it is the structure was for that person. It is not just about a question. It's not just about the underlying question. It's not just taking action. It's about the accountability as a result. I love that. And there's always the under question, right? And yes. I love how you even, that was the first thing you said was you asked me a question. I think that's, that's the power, right? I mean, that, mm. that's, that's so important to kind of get back, you know, the layers of the onion. Um, now this has been great. I love it. And, and I think knowing, knowing what you're all about and knowing who you want to serve and knowing it in a very unapologetically is really the, the, the beginning of all this. Right. And, and to reconnect with that and, and to create the space that you can reconnect with it. So it's been great. Uh, Jasmine, where can the ladies listening learn more about you and follow you along your, your great journey here? It has been an absolute honor. I want to say thank you for the most powerful questions and everything, everything that I said, I hope was like wrapped in a big love bow. Okay. <laughs> like I'm going to end it on the 50% holy side. Um, <laughs> I just appreciate these conversations. I really get so lit up to see women take control of their finances, of their trajectory. We are the captains of our ship. And so why not stand in our purpose and do those very things? Thank you for giving me the honor to do the thing that I absolutely love, which is to empower other people. You can find me at socialcurator.com and on all social platforms at Jasmine Star. And all this information you guys can find on our show notes. We're going to transition to our fabulous three questions. The first one, Jasmine, is what's the most transformational book you ever read? This, it's hard to say, but I can say what comes up for me immediately would be The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. There he talks about the four quadrants of imposter syndrome, what we can outsource, where should we spend most of our time? It was such a powerful, simple read, but had transformative effects. The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Well, something the universe is kidding today because uh, we had a previous interview and this book is mentioned no. for the second yeah. time right I now. I have the chills. So I guess I... I, Put that on my uh, list. We need to get it. I'm reading it. Tonight. All right. I got it. Universe. I am already ordering on Audible. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, the second question is what's the most powerful routine that you do to create a financially free and balanced life, whatever balance means to you? 
A gratitude practice. Every day I have a gratitude practice. I take time in the morning to pray, breathe, meditate. And I write down amongst other things, just five things I'm very grateful for. And then I express those five things to my husband and business partner to keep me accountable. Wonderful. Last question, which woman famous or not has inspired you the most? And I think I know well, outside of my mother, I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure every guest probably says that. No, but, but, but hands down, truly, she's just been so transformative. And she's the kind of person who will, um, yesterday, as I was shopping, she said, Jasmine, I, I know you're very busy and I know you have a lot of things. I'm like, yes, mom, I was running around doing all these things. And she had said, I, I don't know how to order food on, on my phone. Can you just have a burrito delivered? And I was like, yes, mom, of all the things that I am doing, That's the least it? financially <laughs> responsible thing I need to do is order her burrito. I was like, you got it, mom, you got it. So, um, yes, my mother and burritos and salsa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's I love wonderful. It. Uh, Jasmine, thank you so much for, for again, being on our show and sharing your wisdom with, with the women in our community. Mm. Hope that you got fired up to kind of take their social media by storm here and just being their authentic self. So thanks again for being thank here. You. I appreciate you both. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Jasmine. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.